Congratulations. 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 Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to that right smash there. like. <laughs> that right there is now our advertisement. <laughs> I'm just cut Great. out the like, comment, subscribe. It's just gonna be that. Damn on that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. on that bell. Hey, welcome back to Heat Wave. Uh, today we're going to talk about some of the shit that's happened. Uh, seeing how we're not going to have an E3. <laughs> The people are just spouting out random information here and there. Uh, of course, the big one was the uh, PS5 announcement with uh, from Sony. But we also had an EA announcement, some PC gamer announcement. IGN had like a summer of games thing. I don't know. Stuff's happened. But honestly, the PS5 one is the main focus I want to talk about today. Um, and uh, honestly, uh, I was really excited about it. I, I'm glad it happened because I just needed something to talk about that wasn't sad. So it was a nice <laughs> distraction. That was my number one takeaway from it. <laughs> Not <laughs> sad. <laughs> like, hey, this, hey is... this doesn't fill me with dread. Yay. Yeah, it was kind of nice. I was like, oh, hey, I'm excited about something. It kind of <laughs> feels like E3 again. Um, I will say that I like this presentation. I watched the PS5 one all the way through, mm -hmm. and I do like this presentation better than any of the E3 presentations because there was less people talking in between the games. It's mm. just showing games. Mm -hmm. It's always some dude like with his uh, blazer on and like a t-shirt, and he's like, this year we wanted to create the most innovative game that we could possibly make yeah, with yeah, our yeah. system. Like, just It's always <laughs> the same buzzwords that they say. We're pushing the limits of, yeah. you know, of rendering pushing. technology. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the most a, polygons on screen. I can see you pushing up your glasses, Brittany. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always bullshit like that. And I think the first year I watched E3, I was impressed. But after that, I was like, oh, this is the same shit every year. So whatever. Yeah, exactly. Just show me the game. Well, well so. and that's I, I remember when Michelle used to make us come over and watch all of the E3 stuff. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. my favorite one was when me and jairus got super hyper pissed about the xbox one announcement and they were like doing that all digital bullshit for yeah. a little for a spell oh man seeing i could see the steam coming off of jairus's shoulders and i was just like yes because yeah. we were streaming it at the time so uh, <laughs> so the live reaction was pretty perfect God. don matrix drm pisses me off <laughs> So when I watched this, I was at work by myself and like, uh, just like I had a whole side of the office to myself and I was just screaming and cursing at random shit because first of all, the event started in the dumbest way possible with them announcing <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5 coming to PlayStation 5. Yeah, and I was, was just like, so oh, you mean the thing that was on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 3? Great. That was a really weird choice to start off with. I uh -huh. thought. It's like, why? I've, cool. Got, now it's <laughs> just put that shit in the middle. So I've got the reveal thing, or like the, the video that they showed um, of the PlayStation 5, and it looks mm -hmm. beautiful, but mm -hmm. I, I just cackled because I got to the point where they showed two versions side by side, <laughs> one of which had a disc slot, the other didn't. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> which was its own thing. By the way, everyone at work, like, Doug was at work, and he just started yelling at everybody after that who was watching. He was just like, you better fucking buy the physical one. <laughs> and I was he even retweeted me because I made like a tweet about it, but um, it was the dumbest thing. I'm just like, here we go again, fucking going digital only. Let's see how successful that actually ends up. Yeah, we'll see. So right now, rumors. This wasn't announced during the thing, but rumors are saying that the digital one will be four hundred dollars and the physical one will be five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And it that's a hundred dollars worth of disc drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care if it is an HD Blu-ray or whatever. That's not how no. much that costs. No, at most, at most, it's fifty. But I doubt it's well, that. Well, maybe we can buy the digital only version and then rig something. Just get a USB <laughs> disc drive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's probably fine. I mean, honestly, the digital one looks better. It 
does, right? yeah. But well, and that's that's probably what happened is that they like were in the design ideation process, and they're mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, we just can't figure out how to get a disk drive in here." <laughs> it, it seems like it does seem last some minute. Fucking designer built the most elegant, perfect Alienware computer that they could, <laughs> um, and then got to the end, and somebody was like, "Hey, but." where's the disk drive and they're like oh shit yeah i guess humans want disk drives where do i put my copy of twister on (laughs) (laughs) blu-ray it's like a weird inversion of user-centric design Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where it's like we're building the most beautiful thing we want to build so fuck you and i kind of hate that in general yeah yeah, I mean, it's very like it's exactly how the Xbox One was announced. It's the same attitude of like, yeah. we're rich and we don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wild because they got so much press mm-hmm. off of like, hey, with PlayStation, mm-hmm. here's how you share a game. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's just exact one opposite. person. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild <laughs> to see how much like mm-hmm. I kind of want to scrape linkedin and see who's involved with this project (laughs) Mm -hmm. and compare it to the xbox one you know it's funny you mentioned that because people have already been scraping linkedin and there's actually been some weird reveals about the uh the playstation 5 os from linkedin Uh, so it's been really weird like uh, that's where the price uh rumor is coming from as well Mm. so it's real you can it you're not that far off about getting information no, i mean yeah that's that's <laughs> a real place like if you want to figure out who is working on a thing and what mm-hmm. skills they have you can mm-hmm. make inferences about it exactly um i'm i will say i think the reason why the playstation 5 announcement was so successful has got to be for the spider-man miles morales announcement um so much that there's speculation over the fact that whether it was an expansion or a full game or if it's coming to ps4 or not um and it looks amazing it looks amazing um i bought spider-man uh right before christmas and i still haven't played it and i've been kind of meaning to play it so this gives me another reason to slap again i'm in the same boat i'm i'm looking forward (laughs) to eventually playing uh uh, that game and a lot of other games, but uh, at, at the, mm-hmm. yeah, I feel, I feel like at the point that I actually will, they'll put out like a remaster version that um, mm-hmm. takes advantage of the um, uh, the quick the, the, hardware. the hardware, yeah, and the the, the SSD um, architecture. Um, the next game announcement that they had was, of course, every single one of these has to have a racing game because it's one of the best ex- ways to show off like how graphics <clears throat> have advanced. So they had to do their Gran Turismo 7 announcement. And I was like, cool, car porn. <laughs> yeah, that was whatever for me. I don't really care. Also, what psycho picks the view where you're inside the race car to play? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? I mean, I think that's a Jair's <laughs> choice, right? You would do that? No, 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 no. Okay. Sometimes. Okay, because I actually know, though. Or maybe I'm thinking of, like... Like, uh, I would do that... You're of Watson. I do yeah, that yeah. view, like, if I'm in an arcade and I'm playing with a wheel and, like, the chair and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm, but, like, mm-hmm. just playing at home, like, with my controller, I'm like, I'm not doing No, that yeah, view. I need to That's see the crazy. car. <laughs> yeah, but it makes um, for a good uh, showcase of the, the lighting effects and, and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Also, uh, I... I the one thing that really made like these presentations um, pop are the fact that they're showing in-game like mm-hmm. gameplay with HUDs and everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was actually really nice to see that the mass majority of every game on there was in-game footage. Yep. Yeah, which yeah. Re- which really impressed me about this next game. This is actually my favorite uh, game to come out of it, and I was not expecting this. Was Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart? Yes. And the reason why I, I'm not, I don't really care for the Ratchet and Clank uh, series, but I like platformers. And what really got I've me was just like, Ratchet and Clank. Uh, what, what really got me was the fact that it was uh, a great example of how the hardware is being used to advance uh, gameplay versus just making things prettier. And yeah. the SSD was like, oh, cool. You can instantly load a world and was walk through this dimension. It's very portal-like, except it's an entire different map instead of just a different part of the same map. Mm-hmm. Um, I also liked the fact that there was so 
many NPCs on screen doing all kinds of wild things and interacting with each other at once. Uh, like it just felt like a, a lived in world, which was really cool. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. It was definitely my it felt like the most next generation game I saw. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm real excited for it. I, I love the Ratchet and Clank games. And uh, yeah, like you said, like yeah, it, it's it, it's probably the, the best show off of the, the SSD technology, something that uh, Xbox will probably I, I, I'm curious how um, I'm assuming it, it won't be able to, to work on the lo- level that this game kind of demonstrates, but I'm sure it will. It'll... I mean, the only real difference is bandwidth. Like they both have SSD, but just one has like it's a, more. It's bandwidth a substantial amount of bandwidth, though. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the next. The, oh, sorry. I oh, no, I was going to say, yeah. More yeah. To say. I was trying to transition this too. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next game that they announced was uh, a Square Enix game, which I don't think really mattered because it's going to come out in 2023, if that as of right now, which means it'll probably be 2025. Uh, Project Athea. Uh, it looked like a cool looking werewolf. Game. I put that down as like a maybe game. Yeah. I was like, that may be cool, but I need to see more about it. Yeah. That know? one's just way too early in development. Yeah. It looks cool, though yeah it looks cool um Squ- uh, square does make great games but like it's just they're always really bad about timelines and they announce stuff way too early all the time yeah uh the next one was absolutely a surprise hitter for me and that was the game stray uh which is a cyberpunk game where you're fl- uh in this like dystopian post-apocalyptic world f- uh, inhabited with nothing but robots and the you uh, the whole trailer you're watching this robot go about its day and whatnot being followed by this l- real cat a real life cat and then all of a sudden at the end of the trailer you realize oh this part you the playable character is the cat you play as the cat yeah that one for me was definitely That a sounds game dope. I wanted to play so mm-hmm. That one got a smiley face. <laughs> that one That's got a... That's how I, like, graded these games. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo Jungle 2. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people were saying that, and I was like, okay, I kind of get that. But um, as far as, like, new IPs and what, that was the one that got me the most. Yeah, that looked really cool. Um, after that, there was another game uh, developed by uh, Sony uh, called The Returnal. <laughs> I, it, uh quick note on stray sorry to interrupt yeah go ahead uh from the notes on that stray is developed by blue 12 studio a small team from the south of france that is mostly made up of cats and a handful of humans <laughs> Great. <laughs> perfect oh, excuse me perfect <laughs> that's from their steam page that's great marvelous you know oh, what? What would cat Peter Molyneux? Peter Meowlinoo? <laughs> yeah, Meowlinoo. It has to be. You know what? Honestly, like that's enough for me. It's just straight. Up. <laughs> there are some other. There are some other things in there that were fun to talk about. Like I'm excited about the sack boy, a big uh, adventure. Yeah, the sack boy thing looks cool. Like um, I loved Little Big Planet, but I don't think it'll be a good, as good as the first game because I didn't think the second game was as good as the first game. But mm-hmm. I still like that universe, and I yeah. still want to play it. Yeah. Um, another surprise one for me was Goodbye Volcano High. Uh, which mm. was looked like a shell shaded, um, a shell shaded game where you're in a high school inhabited by dinosaurs next to a volcano, and it looks like it all ends up with all of them dying with a giant comet hitting and destroying um, everyone. My notes for that: I wrote, "Art looks interesting, but like Animal Tumbler." Yeah, it's kind of like how it felt. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I'm in a band and the world's going to end, and my parents don't understand me. That's kind of like the vibe I was getting from yes. the top yeah. of the voiceover. But the art looked really cool, yeah. so I was like, I don't know, maybe we'll see. <laughs> um, Odd World Soulstorm got shown, and that's really cool. We have a relationship with Odd World, God. but I'm also like I'm so tired of those Odd World games. It's whatever. <laughs> um, it looks cool. But I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, I'm not, I'm never been um, much of a fan of the Odd World games, but it's cool they're making another one. Hmm. Um. This one uh, I was excited about last year. Last year during E3, there was a really exceptional um, Asian woman who was the producer of this game, and she was just the most charming 
best part about E3 last year. She's left the game and left the project since, but uh, Ghostwire Tokyo looks badass as hell. Yes. Um, you are in this weird, diseased Tokyo where people are just disappearing. They're not dying. They're disappearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like a futuristic um, uh, sci-fi game, but with a lot of like mystery elements in it. I thought that game looked a lot like super hot. I could see like that. Like a fleshed out super hot game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me. Gotta have it. Um, There's some other ones. Uh, there's some other games that were, I mean, uh, Hitman 3, for example, got a lot of, like, a lot of coverage in the thing, but <laughs> it's just not a franchise I've ever really cared about. I'm going to go ahead and give us another five minutes. I, um, uh, I put down a maybe for Jet. Okay. I thought that one looked kind of cool, but I'm not sure about it, you well, know? Yeah. I honestly, I've kind of forgotten about it. So tell me some more about it because you've watched it today. I did, but I don't remember that one specifically. <laughs> oh, I think Jet was the one where you're building a civilization. Oh, okay. Like you're on a planet and like you have to build it, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> Is it like Spore, but you're a jet? Yes. <laughs> no, it looked really cool, though. Let me see if I can find it in the there list that Michelle sent us. That it's in there. Um, there's another yeah, the jet, the far shore, the world is shown as a dreary, but a rocket fires into space and shows a series of satellites that appear to hold some sort of future for the planet. Hundreds of years later, a small ship flies to a much more vibrant land. So it just seems kind of like a, like we're going to start over type of deal. I don't know. There wasn't a whole lot about it. That's why I put a maybe beside it. <laughs> um, yeah, that one didn't really interest me. That's kind of why I skipped over it. But yeah, and if you guys have other games that I'm skipping over, just go ahead and shout them out. One of the ones I love that, that Michelle <laughs> is is burnt out on space games because of No Man's Sky. Partly, but yeah. uh, honestly, yeah. Uh, I, uh, after Out of Worlds, I could take more. <laughs> like, um, yeah. The one that fucked me up the most though was Bug Snacks. Talking about Bug Snacks. Uh, that game is fucking weird looking. That game looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're like this, like it starts off as this cheery kids game. And then all of a sudden the strawberry comes to life and then someone eats the strawberry and then their arm becomes a strawberry and it just looks like body horror porn. Yeah, it's mm. like uh, by the same people who I made Octodad. Made so. I, I made an approving sound, but uh -huh. I meant to make that... <laughs> Not sound. <laughs> I, meant that, I meant that to sound like ah. No, I think we just out, I like. Mm. I think we just learned something about Jairus. Maybe he did I too. I want to eat a strawberry and become the strawberry. <laughs> I mean, the milk and the milk's in me. It's like the blueberry girl from Willy Wonka. God. Uh. Oh yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> Salt me up. I think I made the exact um, same I, comparison when uh, I mentioned. Oh Thomas. really? That's yeah, great. the Veruca Salt comparison. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, um, that song is charming. I love it. Yes, it is. Um, but I'm probably not going to play it. It looks it weirds me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought Solar Ash looked really cool. Oh yeah, yeah. It's by the same people who made Hyper Light Drift. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, uh, it just looks cool. I thought the art was cool for it. So I remember looking at that. It looks like a 3D hyper, uh, hyper drift, uh, hyper light drift. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool. I'm down for that. That was a cool game. It looked like a great, uh, it looked like a great, uh, cheaper game, like a budget game. Yeah. I was like, oh, if this is like 20 bucks, I'll definitely pick it up. Yeah. And then the other one that I really liked that I wanted to play was Little Devil Inside. Okay. I thought that game looked really fun. Yeah. That one looked pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of don't remember that one, to be honest. Damn it! You, you play... So, I mean, tell us about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, it's about... Like, you have to watch the trailer for it, though, okay. to get it. I can't tell you about it. You have to just... Uh, it's the Matrix. Feel Got it, it with your heart. <laughs> cool. Good podcast so, material yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you play as, like, a dude inside of this other dude, and the dude inside is, like, fighting, <laughs> fighting things, and I don't know. <laughs> He's just chip, chipping away at this this man's like insides, and then eventually he's, he's trying to burst oh. out. He's just, it, oh my so, god! So it's it's the Tobias Funke book, the man inside of me. <laughs> yeah, I think so. 
god i'll send you guys the, the trailer for it it's really cool so. um yeah okay well because <laughs> we don't have that much time well some of the other things i was really excited about was like uh demon souls is getting remade that's cool i i um I, i'm sh- i'm sure hutch wants to talk about resident <laughs> evil village god damn resident evil village guys <laughs> 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 man so oh man that game's kind of leaked the existence of it um so but mm-hmm. even not knowing that like like what what how, how that game started out like you, you knew what what it was you knew that was an re mm-hmm. engine game mm-hmm. uh and then eventually they flashed on a um an umbrella uh emblem i was like oh okay yeah that's, this is definitely what that is but it looks cool <clears throat> it's got werewolves and shit and so um uh, you, you play as three protagonists in it, which, um, nothing new for Resident Evil, but still neat. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it looks great. They showed, uh, vampires and uh, just a bunch of, like, Victorian era, like, architecture in some of, like, the, like, his castle, I guess. Um, the uh, end scene where it shows Chris Redfield, like, shooting up uh the uh mia from re7 um who is the uh uh main character's wife at this point i guess um it's kind of crazy because it kind of it's painting him as a villain um but i think that's that's just some trailer (laughs) deception so i don't know well i'm interested very interested to see more about that um and it the trailer opens with his story comes to a close so they could be talking about Mm -hmm. this could be chris redfield's last game so uh, so I will say my favorite thing about the Resident Evil franchise right now is how little they give a shit, and they're just like, let's think of a cool setting and let's make a game around that, and let's put Resident Evil label on it and put some characters people recognize and make a whatever story. But we're just making a whatever like scary game. It feels like I will say that <laughs> I thought that game looked really cool, and I normally don't have very much of an interest in the Resident Evil games. Yeah. Um, so when I saw it was a Resident Evil game, I was like, "Oh, Hutch is going to be really excited about this, probably." Mm-hmm. So, well, it looks awesome, and I like that. You know, for a while there, they were making sure that every sequel was like a direct sequel or had like some like mm-hmm. like it had to be a continuation or be in Raccoon City or whatnot. And I don't like how it's just kind of like you know what, fuck it, we're just going to tell cool stories. I my um, one regret about all of the Resident Evil games is that they <clears throat> took the city name Raccoon City mm-hmm. and now it can't be used for anything else because i would play a game called raccoon city Mm -hmm. where it's just a bunch of raccoons uh like it's it's just a a either sim city but Mm -hmm. everything's a raccoon or uh you are a raccoon police officer roving the streets (laughs) dealing with trash crimes you know what fuck it i think we still need that game i want a pet raccoon now and i want to put it in little police officers (laughs) (laughs) hey they could call it raccoon county (laughs) wow i was just about to suggest that donut county sounds a lot like what that game is (laughs) um for Mm. the last game to talk about um uh, uh, the announced the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon Forbidden West, which looks really cool. Um, made me go, hmm, I should really play that game. I kn- I wanted to, but Breath of Wild came out the same day, so oh yeah, it wasn't happening. Mm. <laughs> they got like robot dinosaurs and shit. I was like, yeah, yeah, that looks cool. I don't remember the first Horizon game, but this one looks pretty cool. Um. Also, I so this one I I thought Death Loop oh, the yeah. advertisement itself looked really cool, but I'm not sure if the gameplay was as cool as the advertisement. No, di- no idea. But it's made by <laughs> uh, the same folks that uh, at Bethesda. I've just forgot what Arcane. the name of the other series name. Arcane, thank you. And it was uh, it was uh, well uh, well received games, but I like the art style. I like the 1960s like mm-hmm. uh, it was look like of a it. movie type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like the concept of like two assassins constantly having to like Seven. kill each other. Seven assassins. Yeah, they. Yeah, but there's mainly two. <laughs> yeah, they do the Dishonored games, so yeah, they do good stuff. Um, okay. yeah, Pragmata. I uh, wanted to also mention that because that's a Kojima ass game that's made by Capcom. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And uh, it's giving me vibes of Astra's Wrath, which was also a Capcom joint. So if it's anything like that, I'm really excited for more insanity. Yeah, Capcom definitely came in and said, you know what? We're going to fucking do some cool ass shit. Cap- Capcom's uh, on just one. on their shit right now. They are. They are. They came back from like the brink, it feels like. All right. Well, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm excited about video games again. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, so we got a lot of cool stuff, hopefully happening this uh, this holiday season. And I'm sure we're going to have some more stuff to talk about as things go along. But um, yeah. How did everyone feel about the PlayStation 5 thing? Like, Jairus, are you excited at all after listening to us? Because you didn't watch it. No, I didn't. Um, I'm uh, generally ambivalent. I have a lot of other things on my brain before that. I think the console looks pretty. Um, I am. I continue to be frustrated by design-led decisions to that mm. extent, mm. Uh, where it gets in the way of functionality and kind of caused me to go down like a, a spiral about <laughs> how the internet works uh, in my own head that I kept to myself uh, for the grace of our listener. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I think it looks cool. It looks like there's some cool shit coming out, and, you know, I, I hope that I will live in a future where i can play some of those games that's fair i think that's all we can ask for wow Mm -hmm. that was a really bleak way for me to end that (laughs) statement (laughs) i liked it stay 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 fast with your ambitions (laughs) stay froggy keep on your toes (laughs) (laughs) you know what i'm just gonna end it there stay froggy fresh bye everybody bye smash like and subscribe a good (laughs) <laughs> a glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow oh, will Jesus. not show its head. Go hence <laughs> to talk more of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned. Some shall be punished. For now, there was never a tale, a, a story of more woe than that this of Juliet and her Romeo.